grew up in southeast Iowa, grew up on a farm. My dad was um, um, a junior high earth science teacher, my mom was a stay-at-home mom, and then later worked outside the home. Um, I have two, two older brothers, um, Chris is uh, 10 years older than me, and Butch, or Chris is 8 years older than me, and Butch is 10 years older than me, and so I was the baby, and uh, I mean things were um, normal up to a point, I think my dad um, spent a lot of time at school and just never really um, had a lot of time for us, it just seemed like he was very distracted. Whenever there was trouble or, you know, just some kind of conflict at home, he would just kind of say, well, I'm going into town grade papers. He would just kind of disappear for hours on end. Nobody really knew for sure. We just assumed he was, he was, he was in, in town at the junior high. And, uh, <clears throat> and uh, so problems never really got solved. My parents, for the most part, I think they got along. I never, I don't remember any real um, serious conflicts. I don't. I don't remember any like childhood abuse or anything. It was just normal, normal. Except that it was. It was. Uh, my dad was just kind of an absent um, dad. About the age of nine, my parents decided to move in town, and they bought their dream home. It was an old sorority house um, in Mount Pleasant that they were going to fix up, and so they fixed it up and we moved in town. Things were good, um, but uh, my dad just slowly, um, just his energy was down, and uh, he got sick. And uh, things things changed radically. Yeah, he went into the doctor, and uh, they did some x-rays and found a, a spot on his lung. Actually, it was more closer to his, his aortic, his artery, and um, he had surgery, but there was nothing that they could do, and they basically um, gave him about six to eight months. Um, live and that was uh, right at about the age of 10. It was a weird um, family situation. It was like moving in quicksand and not really not really going anywhere, not knowing what to do, um, how to solve anything. It was just things were um, just out of our hands. My dad got invited to a uh, to like a lock-in on um, some friends of his, some guys that he had known. One that, I think two of them were carpenters that were working on our house. <clears throat> um, invited him to a, to a lock-in. And, uh, and so he went to this lock-in and uh, it was over the weekend and when he came back, um, he just looked completely different. I mean, he literally looked different. He looked 10 years younger. Nobody could, my mom it was kind of freaked out, and my dad's name was Maynard, and I remember saying, Maynard, what's, what's happened to you? Um, and uh, that's when he, he said that he'd been saved, and uh, that he was just radically changed, and uh, my mom really didn't know what to make of it, but the whole atmosphere of our house just kind of changed. And he was very faithful in uh, sharing the gospel. Prayed all the time. Prayed out loud a lot. Um, we lay in bed and we would just hear him pray for hours and hours. And uh, just every day, share the gospel. We, um, we didn't really know what to make of it. He also said that he thought that his cancer was coming. And we said, 
and that's just the craziest thing we've ever heard. Went for a six month checkup then and the cancer was completely gone. And uh, we thought everything was just great. We went on vacation. Um, got sick again. We drove back. Um, drove straight back. And uh, literally, um, they dropped me off at a friend's house who said I could stay there while my dad checked in the hospital. And uh, I got out of the car and told him I loved him. And that was literally the last time I talked to him. Passed away probably week, two weeks later, and uh, I knew that that had happened when my brothers pulled up. difficult. We were going to a, a church where there were pockets of people that were I believe were saved there. And uh, overall I think it was a it was a wasn't a church that was alive. It wasn't a church where they preached the gospel. Um, but there were there were good people there. Um, but you know they had their own problems and they they can only be around for so long and then um, you know they have their own thing going on they have their own families they have their own problems and so um, basically our family just it was just radically altered it, it just it's almost like if you if you took a hammer and you you hit a window um, and just shattered the window and just fragments everywhere that's it's kind of what happened to our family. Um, I remember hearing the gospel, but never really putting the pieces together. It just never really clicked for me. Um, so I'm, I'm reeling from, literally, from uh, my dad passing away. And the school was difficult. Um, you just find yourself in a whole new context with people and um, situations and and that type of thing. And I remember coming out of Van Allen Elementary, and it was on a Friday. And uh, I would walk, I would walk home, it was probably a, uh, oh, it was probably an eight block, eight plus block walk for me, maybe a little more. And there was a van outside, and um, I heard somebody yell at me, and it was uh, Dr. Scott. And, uh, Dr. and Betty Scott were, they were a, just a godly couple and uh, they had a daughter, Deb, that was in my, in my grade and uh, that I went to school with and uh, you know they yelled at me and asked me if I needed a ride and uh, I told them sure I'd take a ride and when we got in the van they asked me if I wanted to go, you know what I was doing this weekend which was, was weird. Because it was it was moving weekend for us. We had decided to sell the house. The house was just too big. It was an 18 room house, and it was too way too big. It was just my mom and I, and so my mom had had built another house and uh, smaller house on the north side of town, and so we were selling this when it was moving weekend. And they asked me if I wanted to go to um, Adventureland to uh, to a youth rally. I'd been to youth rallies, that type of thing before, but never, never like a, a big, you know, a big deal. And I'd never been to Adventureland, so I'd never been to Des Moines, so that was kind of fun. I'm like, well, yeah, sure. If, if start with my mom, I'm like, well, let's let's just go ask her. And my mom's like, take him. He's just in the way. <laughs> take him. So, uh, so we came up on a Saturday. We went to a youth rally, and uh, I I can't tell you the speaker's name. I I can just remember that it was science related. It was cool things with science and God, and 
And uh, the big finale in the afternoon was that he was going to stand on this on this electronic on this electric device, and he was going to hold his hands out, and sparks were going to fly out of his fingertips. And he did all this stuff, and he presented the gospel, and it just clicked. Everything he said. about the gospel just it resonated with what I heard before um, and he prayed a prayer but he didn't he didn't have to he didn't have to pray it for me I was already in the process of doing that um, just on my own um, there was just something about it it was more than it was more than information for me. It wasn't just academic stuff. It was it was I don't know. It, it was heartfelt. It was it was heartfelt. It was stuff that I had heard before. I think the Lord just used that particular time and um, all those things up to that period. Um, and all the the witnessing by my dad just was faithful presenting the gospel to bring me to that point. And, and I remember that he called for kids to come down front, which I wanted to do anyway because I wanted a Bible, which I think I still have. But I had already I had already in my heart, in my mind, prayed prayed that way. I already knew it just it just. I don't know how to explain it, it just fit. Um, and I think the Lord just used increments of time. To bring an awareness that fully and finally clicked.